The love of God has been expressed over and over again to mankind down through the centuries of time. The many acts of love and concern by God are deeper than any earthly person can comprehend. How could a man love others so much as to be willing to die for them cannot be properly explained. From the days of our earliest recollection, the old familiar verse of Scripture comes ringing through our ears. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. One hymn writer expressed himself by saying, Never in a million years, if that could be, could we understand such love. As Jesus walked through the villages and towns, his heart was crushed and bleeding as he saw the people who were spiritually blind. He attempted to show them the true and the right way to abundant life through his many acts of love and kindness. But still the greater percentage of people refused to accept him. On one occasion, while in deep concern and bitter anguish, while on an elevated area overlooking Jerusalem, he said, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. When you take the sin of Adam, and the guilt of Eve his wife, then to this you add this factor, and this sin so all of love. Piled on this is war and bloodshed, sins of hatred, lust, and pride. It was packed in one great bundle, and to Jesus it was tied. It's no wonder. Oh 
find the best designer Have him draw the greatest plan Should you find the purest marble Strongest metals known to man Then hire his finest builder Let the structure strength above And when all earth's sins are lower They would crush it to the ground It's no wonder that he stumbled As he walked up Calvary's road It's no wonder that he cried out As the blood from his side flowed It's no wonder heaven blackened as all sin cursed the divine. It's no wonder my life was transformed when I saw the sins as one. As they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people and of women which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Yes, a picture of despair and grief, but not in vain. He trod that rugged hill of sorrow, he was sinless. There was no legitimate charges against him, but he looked beyond the cross and he saw deliverance from sin because of his willingness to walk that rugged hill. On Calvary's hill the crowd gathered, hardly anyone in sight now who would openly acknowledge him. 
Is it any wonder that he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It would seem that his father had forsaken him, but not so. It was alone that Jesus died. The weight of it cannot be fathomed. He was nailed to the cross. It was for you and for me that he died, actually nailing our sins to the cross. my Savior, he was willing to pay all the cost. When they drove nails, cruel nails through his body, they were nailing my sins to his cross. So the shame of it, my sins crucified him that day. My sins were to blame, forgive, Lord, I pray. I'll live so the world can know I love him, for nailing my sins to his cross. Although this was centuries ago now, and I wasn't even living then at all, says Jesus died for all sinners. This includes me, oh praise his dear name. Oh, the shame of it, my sins crucified him that day. My sins were to blame, forgive Lord, I pray. I'll live so the world can know I love him. Long before the Savior's time on earth, Isaiah foresaw the life of Christ when he said, He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all.
It was suggested to the children of Israel that they think back to the deliverance God gave them from Egyptian bondage. Not only would this recommendation be fitting for the children of Israel, but it is very appropriate for the people of the 20th century. When Jesus broke the bread and he passed the cup, he said, As oft as ye do this, ye do show forth the Lord's death. For this is the blood of the New Testament which is shed for many, for the remission of sins. It is important that we think more of Calvary.
Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. It has been almost 2,000 years ago since this notable event took place, but the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary not only was sufficient for the sins of the people of that day, but the blood that he shed back there is still just as powerful to the deliverance of sin this day. Through his blood, he will abundantly pardon.
to you today who have not had the blood of Jesus applied to your heart's need, I would encourage you to seek him today and to discover the joy of sins forgiven. He died but is not dead. He is alive and desirous of cleansing the heart of everyone who will acknowledge their need of his cleansing blood. The chapel choir joins me in praying that this recording will be a means of helping to bring people to their consciousness of a need for the Savior.